Hey everyone, this is Sam for .NET Latest. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about object caching in the .NET 4 framework. Caching is essentially the process of storing frequently used data on the server to fulfill subsequent requests. Now, there are different types of caching available to the .NET developer, but in this particular vi video, I'm going to talk about object caching. Begin writing any code. Let me just explain what, what, what I'm going to do in this project. I, I want to create a console application which essentially has a list of books and I want to be able to cache this list of books. I'm going to create a website which also reads a list of books from, for example, let's say a database, but I'm going to do it in memory so it's faster. And um, I want to be able to cache this um, list of books. All right, let's jump right in. So over here, I'm going to go and I'm going to create a new project. So let's jump right in here. We're going to create a new caching library. Let's call this um, caching. Uh, let's start creating a new solution. All right, I'm going to get rid of this class. Yes, I do. And we're going to add a new class, which we're going to call our cache engine. Spell that correctly. OK. Uh, let's change this to public. All right, good. Now, for the benefit of this video, I'm not going to, you know, type all of the code because it will be just a waste of time. So I'm going to set up all the initial um, classes that I need to, and I'll copy and paste the code in so you don't have to watch me, um, you know, type. All right, so I just added this um, code, which I'd already already typed. And um, it's important that you t you make a note of this part. So um, by default, when you create any library, you don't get a reference to system run system dot runtime dot caching, and that is why you can see that my uh, Visual Studio is color coding this as there's something wrong. So I'm gonna right click on references and add a reference. So we're gonna go and type in caching. Um, if I would choose the right assemblies. Okay, let's go here instead. Okay, so let's type caching. And okay, so as you can see, system.runtime.caching um, can be found. We're going to add this reference. Now I should be able to, yep, add those uh, references. And now, now everything you know looks pretty and everything looks nice. So the object cache, um, I'm just going to read the documentation here. It represents an object cache and provides the base methods and properties for accessing the object cache. Now an implementation of this object cache is the in-memory cache or what we call memory cache. So it just represents the type that implements an in-memory cache. Um, so as you can see, it has a number of methods. So what I've done actually here is that I want I wanted this to be a little bit more generic so that I can actually add any object, sorry, any class to the cache. And that is why I'm using type parameters here. So in this first um, static method, which essentially just says, I'm going to give you a key and then go look up the um, corresponding entry in the cache with that key and return it to me and make sure it's of a type T. Type, of course, can represent anything. And so if this works, I'm going to get my, you know, object, which was cached. And if this, if there was a problem or if it, you know, the key was, um, uh, the key didn't pull up any corresponding entry, I'm just going to return null. Now, um, in the second method, and this is essentially just to insert a value into the cache. So in the memory um, memory cache, there is a method called add. 
and it simply passes in, you pass in a key, the object you want to, and then, you know, a time frame of how long it should stay in that cache. So what I've done here is that I've created a generic method of type T so I can add a object of any type and um, the key um, will be included. I'm going to add the item and I specified that after one hour um, the item in the cache should expire so it's going to drop out. So at that point after an hour if we try to access this element again then of obviously it would try and actually go back to the source. So let's illustrate this um, with an actual implementation in a console application. All right, so I've added a couple of more files. I've created the console application to save time. Like I said, I don't want to necessarily waste your time. Um, so let's go back to the caching project to be first. So I've added this book data. This is just an in-memory representation of a list of books. So I have a very, very simple definition of a book. It has an ISBN number and it has a name. I've created the static method, which will essentially give me a list of books. I have four books, The Killing Mo Mockingbird, The Firm, Alex Cross, and Along Came the Spider. They all might seem a little familiar to you if you are a novelist. All right. So this is going to be my, you know, sample database or web service. This is essentially what I would be reading from if this was a real, um, you know, real application. So in my console application, it's a very simple program. And let me walk you through. So first of all, I've created a key, which is, you know, books. Let's just create a very simple key called books. Now I've, I've, um, I'm, I'm using the cache engine essentially to initially try and read from the cache to see if my list of books exist with this key. Now remember, if we go back to our cache engine, what does this method um, attempt to do? You pass in a string, you pass in a type. In this case, it's the list of books and this will, it will go inside of the memory cache and it will attempt to retrieve the object associated with this key. When this program initially runs, because there isn't anything in there, this should come back as null. Now, when this does come back as null, then we're going to go and then actually retrieve the, um, you know, the list of books which we created from our static class, bookdata.getbooks, right? This is going to have a list of books. And then I'm going to add this to um, the cache so that any subsequent calls to retrieve um, a list of books with this key should give me that list. So I'm actually going to um, set a breakpoint here so we can walk through. So why don't we do just that? All right, let's set this project to be startup project and let's run. Okay, so I'm going to hit F10. You'll notice that this is null as we expected. Uh, it's going to go inside of this if loop. It's going to retrieve the list of books. We have four books, The Killer Mockingbird, The Firm, Alex Cross, and Along Came a Spider. Perfect. All right, so now let's see if our code actually works. Now we're going to actually pass in the, the key, which is books, and um, we should get back the list which we just saved, which we do right there, the list of four books. So, you know, we would then obviously display them. Um, and it seems a little small, so let me open, us a bit, open it up a bit. So there you go, four books that we've retrieved from the cache. Okay, so for the last part of this demo, what I've done is created a new website, and this is an MVC website. So I have a home controller which is what you can see right now. And the code might look very familiar because it is actually exactly the same code that I had in my console application. So you can see that I have my key called books. I have a call to the cache engine, which would retrieve um, my list of books with the key. And of course, you know, the regular check to see whether 
the call to the cache engine failed or not, or whether it actually retrieved any information. And then I would, you know, fall back to making a call to the actual source of the data. In this case, it's an in-memory, um, just a static class, which, you know, gives me a list of books. It could be um, a database call or it could be a service call, um, service as an API call. And once I've got my books back, I'm then going to, you know, once again, add it to the cache so that when anyone else tries to view the home page using this act um, action, they wouldn't have to hit, you know, um, my book data collection. They would just essentially pick it up straight from the cache and move on. So let's take a look at the view for this. It's very simple. I put everything in the view bag because it's just so simple and for the purposes of this illustration, it will suffice. Um, so that's pretty much it. Let's run this and see what happens. Okay, as you can see, I have all the four books that we initially stored or we retrieved, um, as you can see here on the page. Um, this isn't it actually, so let's, let's do this. Let's set a breakpoint to actually see what happens now when I refresh the page and um, a request comes back to our controller. And we wanna make sure that the information is actually being pulled from the cache and not going back to our source. So I'm going to go back and refresh the page. My breakpoint is hit. So at this point, because we've already hit this page once, I expect this to give us some data. And voila, as you can see, I have those four books back um, because this is not null, it bypasses this logic to go back to the source of my resource, which is, you know, like a database or anything, right? And then, you know, essentially I just push this up to my presentation and um, voila, there you go. And so that's pretty much it for this short tutorial and caching. Um, it will prove to be very useful for anyone who wants to build a performant website to cache as much information as possible so that you're not sending users to retrieve information which is already available and really won't change. Um, now if this if the list of books are something that is going to change often, I might not be I might not be able to cache it for an hour because otherwise users will be um, presented with information which is stale. So you have to be careful about the the duration or how long you store this in your cache. You have to base it upon um, specific requirements and essentially how long um, information can be stored in your cache without being stale to your users. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Um, watch out for some new videos that I will be making and feel free to subscribe to my channel, .NET Latest. Hook me up on Twitter at .NET Latest. I'll catch you later. Remember, it's practical and it's straight to the point. Sure.